All right, we are going to talk through sets and um, that sort of thing, learning how to, to write mathematically. I'm talking through the notes in case someone's absent or wants to get a jump on things. So a set is just a collection of number or objects. Um, so typically we write a set with brackets and we might say it's the set one, two, three. Okay, so that could be set A, that could be set B. You could say that it's the set of animals and we have lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, lion, tigers, bear, can I spell? Um, make them all plural, whatever. Um, and so that's now a set of animals. So a set is just a collection of number or objects. It can be a finite set or it could be an infinite set. Like we could say it's the set of real numbers. Okay, that has, um, uh, let me think about that for a second. This is the set of real numbers, so this is actually one element. So there's infinitely many things that are this one element. Hang on, let me not use that example, my bad. I could say something like this. I could say it's the set of zero, one, two, three, and I could keep going like this. So this is an infinite set. There's infinitely many terms. But this is also a countable set. We can count how many terms there are in it as opposed to um, having every particular real number, but I digress. Okay, so each object is called an element or a member of the set. Um, so then they wanted us to, to use some mathematical language. So when we talk about something as an element of the set, this term right here, it looks like a little fancy E, this means element of. Okay, so if I were to say X is an element of set A, if I were to write this, that means X is an element of A. So there we go. If it's not an element of, then we're going to take that element symbol and cross it out. So that means it's not an element. So we see here, y is not an element of b, so y is not an element of b. The next one, um, if I want to figure out how many number, how many sets, how many elements are in a particular set, I can say the number, oh my bad, okay, the number in a is equal to, and this means the number of elements in set a. So if I said right here, oh, there are 10 elements in set c, the number of elements of set c is equal to 10. Um, okay, so the next thing is sometimes, let me, let me do this, sometimes you'll have a set, let's say we've got the set 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. Okay, so those are some multiples of 3. And then, let me, just for clarity's sake, we'll clean that up a little bit. Um, and then I've got the set um, 6, 8, 10, 12. Okay, um, Well, so there's certain set elements in one set. Hang on, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm so sorry. It is the beginning of the school year, and here we go. Let's say I've got this set that has 6 and 12. Well, you'll notice here that both of these terms, if this is set A and this is set B, we see that the two elements in B are also elements in A. So we can say that B is a subset of A. Now this notation, this one right here, means that it's a, that every element in B is in A, but this little line under here tells us that it could, they could also be equal sets. So what happens here is that B would be a subset of B. They're the exact same set, but everything in B is also in B, if that makes sense. Um, this one is also a proper subset. So this is, this is the notation for subset, and this is the notation for proper subset, and that looks something like this. B is a proper subset of A. So it's kind of this little subset thing. It's not exactly a C. It's more like a sideways U. Um, and this means that B, every element in B is in A, but they're not equal. Okay, so remember how, like, if you were to say greater than or equal to, that's a less than, my bad. Less than or equal to would look something like that versus just a less than sign. Similar idea. This is a proper subset, meaning it's proper... Um, the proper tells us that it could not also be equal. Subset versus proper subset. So when we come down here, it says X is a proper, X, P is a subset of Q, P is a subset of Q right here. X is a proper subset of Y, that means X is a proper subset of Y, we would write that notation like that. Um, the empty set or the null set can be written, um, hang on, let me make this less messy. The empty set can be either written as just 
brackets that are empty, or a zero with a line through. And now I want to be very careful, if you mean it to be the number zero, you don't get to write the line. Um, if I have a set, this is, this is kind of confusing, but if I have a set and I put, this is a set with one element. That one element in that set is the number zero. This right here would be an empty set. There's nothing inside of it. This is how we could say it's the set, the empty set right here. So if you mean for it to be zero, so like if this is, if this is A, um, then we could say that the number of elements in A is equal to one. There's one element inside of it and it's zero. Now here's where it gets confusing. If I have the set, this is a set whose only set inside of it is the empty set. Now wrap your head around that. Um, but this one, if this is say B, then the number of elements in B is once again equal to one. There's one element and that one element is the empty set. Um, so be careful with your notation. Zeros should not have the line, null sets can have, should have the line. Or you could pick one of these two for the null set. Um, so where were we? So here's that. Then the next thing it says, two sets are equal if, hang on, I'm going to make that a little cleaner for you to see. Two sets are equal if they have the exact same elements in them. So we talked a little bit compare and contrast subset and proper subset. I wrote um, P is a subset of Q if every element of P is also an element of Q. P is a proper subset of Q if it is a subset of Q but not equal. Okay, the proper tells us that they're not the same. Um, so if you think of it this way, if P is a subset of Q, here's Q, and P is going to be something like that. Okay, it could be that this, uh, oh, ha, there's my Q, ha. this is Q, and say this is also P. This one, they're, the, they're equal sets. P is a subset of Q, but it's not a proper subset. So here we could say that P is a is a proper subset of Q. Here, P is just a subset of Q. Okay, um, determine if it's, so in this one, they're saying, sorry, here's my answer, don't look. Uh, they say when X is an element of A, and A is a subset of B, X is in B. Well, here's A that's inside of B. If X is in A, X also has to be inside B. So that is always true. The next one, they're saying A is a proper subset of B. So in this one, A could have been the same size as B. I drew one example, not both. Um, in this one, A is a proper subset of B, so A has to be inside B and it's smaller than that. And it says A and B are equal sets. Nope, not if it's a proper subset. The next one, when X is an element of B and A is a subset of B, X is an element of A. Well, look at this one. So X is an element in B and A is a subset of B. So A has to be... It might be the same size as B, it might be smaller, we don't know because we've got both options that we can consider, but they're saying that X is in B. Well, notice X could be out here somewhere, or X could be here. So it's sometimes true, but it's not always true. Um, okay, the next one, it says the intersection of sets, hang on, do this. The intersection of sets A and B is um, the elements which are in both A and B. So if we had, do you remember a minute ago I was a little confused and I was writing 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and I said this is set A. And then I said, okay, set B is equal to 6, um, what did I want? 6, oh, I did that, that's right, 6, 8, 10, 12. Okay, if I want to find what's in the intersection, then I can say A intersects B, that's going to be the stuff that are in both A and B. And that's written like this, A intersect B. It's kind of an upside down U. And that would be the set, well, let's see, 6 shows up in both. 9 does not, 12 does. So that would be something like this. Okay, they're mutually um, exclusive or disjoint if they have no elements in common. Um, and so that would be something you could draw a Venn diagram, like here's A and here's B. They're, they have nothing, there's no overlap between them. Um, and that's written as the number of elements in their intersection is equal to zero. The union, okay, are the elements which are in either A or B. So if A, once again, was that set 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and B was the set, I think I started with 6, 8, 
10 and 12. I'm just trying to give you an example here. Um, the union, a union B, looks like this, would be the set, well, we, we need everything. Okay, so we have three. Six shows up in both, but we need it. We have eight, and we have nine, and we have 10, and 12 shows up in both, but there we go, and then we have 15. So if I were to write them, it helps to put them in numeric order if there's something that you can order. But if you don't, you're not wrong. It's just a little harder to work with. Um, and that's written A union B. Okay, and then the universal set is the set under consideration. So it might be that our universal set, in this particular case, our, our universal set may have been the numbers U would be 1 to all the way up to, say, 15. Okay, and it's the integers from 1 to 15. So if I were to draw that, I could take these things and put them in a Venn diagram, and I could say here's A, here's B. The thing that overlapped between them, they both had 6, they both had 12. Then they had A had 3, it also had 9, it also had 15. B also had 8, 10, and, and well, 12 was already taken care of. And then if I said the universal set is 1 through 15, then I've got 1, and I've got 2, and 3 is here. I have 4, I have 5, 6, I have 7 that would be out here. Here's 8, here's 9, there's 10, 11 would be somewhere out here. Uh, 12, I don't have 13, and I don't have 14 written down. Okay, so that's where the universal set, we usually make a box if we're drawing a Venn diagram, and that's the world that we're living in. Um, okay, and so the next thing, I need more paper. The next thing we want to talk about is the complement of set A, and that's all the elements of set U, which are not in A. Okay, so if I, let's say this is A, um, and this is, one, three, and five are in here, and then two and four are out here. Okay, so the, we've got integers from one to five. If this is set A, A would be the set one, three, five. We could say the universal set is the set one, two, three, I, yeah, okay, four, five, and then the complement of A, we write that this way, where it's A not would be the things that are in the universal set, but not in A. So that in this particular case would be two and four. Okay, so we say the complement of A is written A naught, like this. I have seen some books that'll do like a little thing like this to say A naught. I don't think your IB book will do that, but that means not A. Um, and so the intersection of A and not A is nothing. Either you're in A, or you're not in A, but you can't be in both of those. The, the union of those would be like, well, this plus that, or this and that together, it give you the whole universal set. Um, and then this one, the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in not A is equal to the number of elements in the, in the universal set, provided that these sets are finite, I think is what we wanted to write there. Um, I'll do the back of this worksheet in another video because I think this one has gotten longer than I'd want it to go. All right, enjoy. Stick around for video two.